Well, uh, my, my welcomes to everyone here, wh whether you um, have been coming for some time, um, e either online or to the watermill itself, uh, or you are new to this, um, it's great to have you back. The start of 2021, we, we hope very much this is the start of us moving into much more normal times. And um, uh, from the, the, the dark clouds that are still over the top of us at the moment, but uh, we do seem to have some silver linings. And um, so let's hope that that is the case. Now, <clears throat> uh, the next, the two sessions that I'm starting off with this year, this one and in a fortnight's time, are, are both winter scenes. In fact, they're both snow scenes. Um, and I've done that for one or two reasons. Uh, first of all, certainly for the Northern Hemisphere, uh, that, that is seasonal uh, and um, it, it just, uh, there's a certain sense in, in sort of working th through the seasons. Um, but but also uh, it, it's great, I think, with, uh, snow scenes for watercolour. Uh, and in, in, in this one, and um, to a large extent, the one in a fortnight's time, I, I, I think the, uh, the way that I will run my demonstration and, and show you how I do it, it's very much about a light touch uh, and maybe even more so than than some of the ones that uh, would in the sunshine and so forth. So very much a light type. There are all sorts of opportunities for the, the basic watercolor techniques uh, to come into play here, whether it's uh, wet on wet or washes and, and so forth. Um, but it's this light touch, which I think will, will come out in this demonstration that, that I, uh, where, where we're using a lot of the white of the paper and and subtle colors to suggest uh, that this is a snow scene that we're painting. Uh, also, I think uh, finally the reason for doing that is a lot of my tutoring, especially where I'm involved with the water mill, uh, is to do with the warmth and sunshine, understandably Tuscan warmth and sunshine. Uh, and so uh, just an opportunity for a little change there from that doing. Um, in uh, 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 oh, I was just going to describe this. Uh, I think before I do describe it, I'll, I'll just swap the order in which I was going to say things. One or two little words. I'd like to talk and, and demonstrate and help you with uh, colour uh, very much in this, and, and in particular to understand that colour is very relative. Uh, what one a colour when placed to another colour changes and they affect each other enormously and that's something we're going to see happening uh, because because there's a lot of lightness in this we see that happening very much so in, in this painting I and mean, if, if you think of um let's think of an example if you if you think of uh, I, i'm having my kitchen and downstairs done at the moment and it's totally gutted and we'll be decorating later on and then uh when it comes to choosing the colours, if you want to use a white colour, well, you ha only have to go into a DIY shop to see what an enormous range there, there are of whites. And uh, they're all white, but they're all sort of very different. And you can even put a dark colour on a wall and put something even darker next to it, and it might appear um, much lighter. Specifically for today's painting, the snowy scene, um, I, I'm going to be talking uh, on and off as we go along about warm colours and cool colours and how you can put a warm colour next to a cool colour and it can make the, the warm colour warmer and the cool cooler. So, so we'll be playing around with that uh, quite a bit. So one or two little examples before I get going. Uh, I pull these out just on terms of colour. This is a photograph taken by a friend of mine in Devon um, yesterday as the sun was going down and um, I've just made a copy of it because I, it, it shows very graphically uh, the, the warmth of the sky here making this foreground, middle ground and foreground appear um, really, um, really quite cold. It's not actually snowing there, that's a frost, but um, 
at least I think it was here. It might have been in the morning. I can't remember at what time of the day, but it was the sky, uh, the warm sky against the uh, the cool foreground. And here's a picture that I took off the internet, which I thought was really nice. How the bright sunlight that you have in this uh, crisp day with clear blue skies is amplified. Uh, the uh, all these bright um, lights on the snow is amplified by the coolness of the shadows that we see here. These much bluer, cooler shadows are making the light on the snow uh, even stronger, even more exaggerated, um, helping to uh, give you that feeling of coldness. And from, finally, just three pictures from Edward Ciego, as a book on uh, watercolors. The, the, the first one is this. And uh, a, a, a Norfolk Fields in winter. And here, uh, Ciego has used warm and cool colors to particularly give a feeling of overall coldness. He's used in the sky these warm yellows here set against the bluey greeny greys of the sky ma making the skies appear quite cold and down here in the foreground he's used uh, to to exaggerate the uh, the effect of the white the snow he's used really a lot of warm colors warm browns in here with usually there's some form of red in them to make them warmer so that's a very obvious example something a little more subtle is this picture, um, which is uh, again Norfolk in winter. Uh, and um, it, it's interesting to note, and we'll be doing this as we go in with our colors, how he's dropped in here some, some warm browns, how he's used warmer colors in this distant uh, land here all of it to try and exaggerate the effect of the coldness of the snow here. Even the sky has got warmth in it, which is bringing this snow uh, make, uh, and making it very cold. And the last picture I have is probably the most subtle of the three, is this one, all by Edward Ciego. And here, uh, a, a wonderfully uh, swift um, and watercolor that he's painted where he's used the reds, that are in here, these sort of mauves, purples, uh, particularly uh, to bring the snow forward and make that feel a lot colder than, than it is. Um, so in all of these pictures, the, the paintings and the photographs, the paintings particularly, uh, the, the artist has deliberately made use, I would say, of, um, has deliberately made, I've lost my picture, one moment, of warm and cool colours against each other to help to create the feeling of uh, cold winter snow. And so back to this particular picture, I, I did suggest that there wasn't any need to do any drawing for this, and you'll see that the drawing that I'm about to do and will suggest you you, you consider doing something along those lines is, is going to be um, very minimal. But just a word on this source photograph, it's, it's actually a, a lane when I lived in Devon, it's a Devon lane, uh, just my, our, the house we lived in was just around the corner. And um, one winter I took, uh, took a number of pictures of this particular view. Um, it, it's, it has a slight, a, quite an overcast feel to it, whether that's the printing in the uh, printer and the, the photograph or not, but, but I'm deliberately going to bring some sunshine into this. I'm, I'm going to bring a little bit more of the sort of uh, variations and values you get in warm and cool into this picture. In fact, in a fortnight's time, I'm going to do turn it around and do it the other way around. But uh, just to let you know that I am going to be making this a bit brighter than this source photograph 
suggests but but nevertheless it is the the source and the inspiration for how we're going on right um I, I'm sorry, I'm talking a, a little more than I normally do to get going, but I, I'm aware that there are some people who haven't been here before. Two points before we actually begin. What, one is uh, something on materials that I'm using, uh, and the other is just the method that we'll, we'll adopt for doing this um, painting along, painting together session that we're doing today. <clears throat> uh, materials, uh, the, the paper, that I've got here is, is about 11 inches by 15. It's a large sheet of paper that I've cut up in four. It's uh, 300 grams Saunders Waterford and its particular surface is, uh, is cold press or not. So it's somewhere between smooth and, and rough, um, but it is a cotton uh, based paper which um, it, uh, I would suggest is worth investigating if you haven't already done so, because that gives you a lot of absorbency of the water that we'll be using, as opposed to say a paper like a cartridge paper, which tends to have a more polished surface. So that's the paper we're using. I mean, you can work on whatever size you like, whether it's you can work in a little sketchbook if you like, it doesn't really matter. The, the, the next thing is these paints that you can see down the right hand side. These are all squeezed in from tubes into this palette. Um, I, I have uh, Lois uh, kindly sent out a picture showing what colors these all represent. Uh, I will talk my way through them throughout the demonstration and please ask a question if, 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 if I fail to do that. Uh, just remind you what the colors are that I've used here. But these are all artist quality paints. They happen to be Winsor & Newton, but there are many other good um, uh, brands that you could use. Um, and most of them are translucent paints. Um, one or two are semi, and um, I, I think I don't think I have any opaque paints here as such, but most of them are transparent, translucent or semi-transparent paints. And then lastly, before we move on, I've got a range of brushes here. I may or may not use all of them. I'll certainly use this. This is a, a one inch mop squirrel head brush. And I can give you more details on that later on once we get going if you want. This is also a squirrel head brush, but it's um, a, a lesser size. Uh, the, the, the really significant thing about these is that they will all come to a good point. Um, this, this one here, which in fact has only just arrived in the post, um, just after Christmas, is a sword brush, um, uh, but it is also squirrel. Um, and this one, which I've had for years and I already ought to replace, is a rigger brush. I, I think those are the ones I will use. Uh, maybe not this one. This is just a, a, a child's brush, which I've given a bad haircut to, which we've is quite useful for some things. If I use it, I'll explain to you a bit more about that. But I would say that these somewhere are probably be using all these brushes or at least three of them. And I will mention those brushes and roughly how I use them as we go through it. Okay, um, thank you for your patience for that. Now, Let's, um, oh, just one well, last thing I need to say is the method. Um, <clears throat> Lois hinted at it. I'm going to uh, break, as I have done with all of these sessions we've done, I'm going to break the painting of this scene down into four stages. And um, what I suggest you do is uh, when, when you feel happy about it, you, uh, you work along with me or you can wait and see how it goes and, and then do your painting. At the end of each stage, I will stop anyway um, to give everyone a chance to catch up. Um, and uh, that's a good opportunity for me to have a look around and see how you're, you're getting on, for you to ask any questions if you haven't already done so. Um, and, and hopefully uh, th that will give us time in this couple of hours to, to get this painting done. The four stages before I begin stage one are, first of all, 
uh, in a sense, um, it, it, first of all, it's a drawing, making marks with a pencil in this case, which um, will, uh, will lead me into how I'm going to use my paint. Um, I try and do as little drawing as I can get away with. There won't be very much in this one. Um, but also I think tied in with this first phase is just uh, looking at the possible uh, composition that you might use uh, in this case. So I, I'm going to do that in a second. The next stage will be uh, washes, light washes. Uh, we'll let that dry or force dry it with a hair dryer if we need to. Then the third stage will be putting darker colors, um, shadows and things like that on. And the last stage is any final details that are needed just to finish off the painting. So four stages. And whether we're doing a, a sunlit door in Tuscany or a snowy scene in, in Devon, um, then it's pretty much along those sorts of lines. Um, I will, I mean, when I paint, I, I, I tend to move from one to the other and mix, mix over them sometimes on my own. So just be aware that you know, as, as you uh, develop your own painting abilities and so forth, you, you'll find that it isn't necessarily quite so staccato. It isn't necessarily uh, uh, rigid four stages, but they, they do overlap. But we, we will do them as four stages uh, in this tutorial. All right. And then uh, a word about the composition. This, this is uh, deliberately chosen as a very simple um, full frontal sort of uh, picture here. We're, we're looking down a lane. Uh, our eye level is somewhere along this line here because we, we can't see over the top of where the road disappears. And that line there that I'm just emphasizing on is probably the most important bit of the, the drawing we need to do. And I'll, I'll come back to that in a moment. So we, we've got a, a road, we've got a view that takes us down into this little tunnel uh, here. Um, and we're able to see some hedges up uh, around us a bit higher than we are here. So I've obviously standing here with my camera and uh, the hedges were higher than me and that's a bit lower than me. Um, and, and then we've got um, the, the, the trees and I, I'm, I, I'm actually going to add a bit to the, the, the shoulders of this picture, but you, you can choose whatever composition you like. You, you, I, I'm, I'm going to extend this a little bit here, um, but, but you, you decide just what it is that you want to do. So, uh, probably I said this was the, the most important line here. And, and in a sense, it will, you will make a conscious decision. I, I'm gonna use my paper landscape, by the way. Um, that, it's up to you if you wish to turn it the other way around. Um, I'm gonna use my paper landscape. And I, I think if all I need to do is make a decision where I'm going to put that. In other words, where, uh, uh, where my line is going to be for the foreground and how much space I'm going to give myself above and below. Well, I'm, I'm going to give myself a bit more space above. So I'm, I'm not going to go straight down the middle. I'm going to come down a little bit. So there's a bit more room up here for the trees and the sky, but, leave, but leaving enough room for, so say something like that. So that line that I've just drawn there, which is pretty horizontal, um, is going to be uh, wh where this line follows through here. Uh, and I'm also going to take all of this uh, area, all the trees, this, this uh, particularly this tunnel that we're looking down through there, I'm going to shift it all over a little bit to one side, not, not have it straight down the middle. Again, that's a decision you make on your own composition. So um, I'm going to have my, my, my tunnel about something like that. I'm going to have sort of trees going up around here, this sort of thing. And then the other bit of the drawing 
is is to try and position where I am in terms of perspective. So I said that I, I can't look over the, the top of this. So I'm going to do something like something like that. That's going to be my hedge. This is going to be the road running away. And, and there's a sort of hedge that goes something like that. Uh, when you're making your drawing, um, this angle is really quite important to tell you. Shall I make it a bit heavier so you can see? Uh, it's really quite important to tell you whether you're on a flat or going uphill or whatever. So just give a shout if you're having a problem with that. I don't need to, I'm not going to bother with Someone's drawing all these. They're having trouble seeing the lines. Could you make it any darker? I'll make it. So I've, I've put a line in here. That's the line I was talking about. And I've I'll just emphasize, is that looking a bit better? Yes, that looks darker to me. Okay, all right. Now, th these lines may, may or may not get rubbed out, particularly as we're working quite light, I might need to rub them out, but, but uh, the pencil marks will rub out uh, later on. So I've shifted that over to here. I've given myself a bit more space up here than I have down here. And uh, I've, um, I've, drawn the perspective of it such that it looks as if I'm standing looking down this road and not looking up a hill or down a hill. Let's see how you get on with that. Uh, the, the why you use a teeny tiny pencil sometimes? Uh, because, because it's the only one I could find. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, and it's, a, it's the only soft one I could find. I've got some uh, we're in chaos here, Lois. Um, the <laughs> studio is our is, is the kitchen, is the dining room, is, is well, everything's everything. out of the kitchen. Everything's out of our dining room. <laughs> we're, we're virtually living here. That's what I could, I'm glad you found that's one. All, I could find. <laughs> <laughs> all right, is that okay? Yeah. Yeah, we've got a bad. We've got the pretty much the month of January to do, to do. Right, that is my drawing. That is the first stage of, I, I don't need to, I'm, I don't need to put in marks. I don't need to put in, I, I, uh, I'm not even going to put in this hedgerow, which is going to feature the distant trees back here. I, I don't really need to do that. They're going to be there somewhere. It's not important. Um, and I don't need to draw the trees in yet. Okay. Um, if you do that, you, you're, you're moving towards maybe not being as loose as uh, I, I'm trying to make this painting. I want this painting to be light touch and loose uh, depiction of a snow scene. Okay, the next stage is, um, is washes. And th th this is, uh, particularly when we're working with this light touch, this is really important because it will, it will direct us so much uh, the way of the temperature of the day and the snow and everything and what what uh, remember I said I want to bring a bit more sun sun into this as well so I'm going to put some blue um, uh, let, let me do it on my drawing I'm going to put some blue sky up here but it's going to be just a touch of uh, something like cerulean blue uh, a cool blue uh, up here I'm going to merge that into um, the, the yellows, remember those photographs I showed you and in particular that first one and the, the, the skies, but I, I would like, when we're looking down this tunnel, I'd like to, to see some sort of warm light here to help to play off against the, the, the snow and so forth. So I'm gonna bring some cool yellow and some warm yellow in here and, um, and, and then um, ra rather like this painting I showed you, if I got it handy, yeah, rather like this painting I showed you where we were using these warm, he used these warm colors to set against the snow. I'm going to bring something, funny enough, I'm gonna bring something probably a little bit mauvey or something with, with warmth and red in it in here for the distant trees uh, up in the background. Uh, and uh, I was still talking about washes and that let that all flow into each other and um, I'll touch in some warm colors 
um, around the base of some of the this uh, hedge here and one or two flicks here. Um, but but I got to leave a lot of the paper, uh, a lot of this paper, which is going to be the snow, a lot of it here, a lot of this here is going to be left the white of the paper. All right. So someone's asking me she's got two cerulean, greenish and bluish. Which one should she use? Well, no, let me just say something on the colours. I, I think the exciting thing about this is that we're, we're just using subtle colours here. And I don't think any one of us of the 121 I see now of us uh, are, are ever going to get everything exactly the same. I rather hope we don't. But um, it, th that's a choice I'll leave up to the person who, who um, said it. I, I think I'd go for the blue one in preference, but de depending on how he or she wishes to play the other colours against it, We'll just have to see. There's a certain amount of keeping your fingers crossed and seeing how it all looks when it's finished uh, uh, here. But if I, uh, if I give you the sort of colors that I'm using, uh, if you decide to use variations on that, that, that's perfect. That's absolutely fine. Okay, this is going to be wet. There's a lot of water gonna be on here and at the end of it, we're gonna dry. And, um, uh, you you could get a spray and spray it all. I tend not to do that very often. I'm not going to do it now. Um, uh, and I'm going to use this big moppy brush. I don't think I need to go anything finer than that with a lot of water on it. And I'm going to be happy for uh, the paint to merge into each other quite a lot so that there's a lot of softness at this early stage. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to start at the top, load up. I've got a brush full of water here. And you can see that goes to a, a nice point. Uh, and uh, my cerulean, I, I think this is more, more of a blue cerulean than, uh, than a green one, but uh, I'm actually standing up to paint this. I find it easier than uh, painting. So I'm going to put and blues in there. Uh, remembering that um, these watercolors dry um, much lighter than they look at the moment. Uh, if in doubt, just make them. Like, I want that, this to be a little bit more blue here, um, like that. And that's probably good enough for the blues. Uh, I'm going to bring in some um, cooler yellows here. So I've got a, that the cerulean blue that was. Now I'm, I'm just picking up lemon yellow. And in fact, I'm using these really lightly. It's a very loose touch. I mean, uh, just bring in some, and happy for it to, to touch in with what's going on around it uh, a little bit up here. Uh, and then I'm going to warm that up a bit by, say, going for something like aurelian or cadmium yellow, if that would be another one, and put some of that here. I'll, I'll, um, I'll take it to that line. That's the only bit of precision I think I'm going to do here. And just let that work its way up here. Some yellow uh, 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 on that. Um, I'm going to bring in... I'll bring in, um, I've got a mauve here, which, which is a mixture of ultramarine blue and, and crimson, but I've actually got it as a mauve. I, I put it in my list. It's, a, it's what I'd call a convenience color. Uh, and I'm going to pop a bit of that in there. I, I'm going to bring it down to, um, the line of the top of the hedge. I'll just make that a little bit less of a straight line because it, uh, this is going to be the sort of the, the snow at the top of the hedge here. And um, so I've got, just as I, I went to this line and was fairly careful with that, I'm going to just put that in there. Uh, I'll drop a, a little bit more 
here for the moment. What color is that, Mike? It's 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 mauve. Okay. Okay. Now I've got a lot of water on here um, at the moment, and I I think um, I I'm, I'm going to bring something warmer up just up here sort of the, the, this picture of the trees has got a lot of um, warm leaves up here so if I um, let's have a look if I'll just practice that a little bit of this um, Windsor red I've got here that's far too strong a red so maybe if I mix it with burnt sienna let's just see what I've got here uh, just pop in a few little bits there uh, and where where it touches other paint it's mixing in with it and um, where it comes against some of the bits I haven't painted you've got slightly harder edges but uh, uh, I'm just going to put a little bit in in like that um, uh, these this is all softness here just build up um, I'm going to bring in this is the bottom of the hedge here. I, I, in order to make that bottom of the hedge distinguish it, I can bring in the shadows and everything later on in the painting, but I, I just want to have some, a few interesting warm colours here. I can add some cool colours later on. So I'll pick up, pick up what I've got in the palette here, which was a mixture of the Windsor Red and the Burnt Sienna. Um, and I'm just popping marks here, arbitrary marks, just taking me down uh, and I'll do a few here. I, they, they may or may not be useful to me a little later on. Um, let's just see if we'll uh, pop in a few other little colors. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take that color again. It's a uh, Windsor Red and Burnt Sienna. And um, using the edge of my brush here, I'll just make a few little, few little marks. We don't need too too many of these; just a few little marks, which suggest that maybe some people have walked down here with a dog, or maybe maybe even a vehicle, depending on what you want. Just something here. Um, Right, do I want to drop any other colours in at this stage? Um, if I do, um, and especially if you've got a lot of water on the paper, bring in a strong colour if you can. Uh, you know, for instance, let's just bring something. Um, what should we put in there? Or should we just leave it, um, I think, at this stage? Yeah, let's leave it at this stage. So. It's that sort of thing. You can pro probably see that that is all very light, washy. Um, I, I have left a lot of the um, paper there, which is going to be my snow. Um, some colors are merging into other colors where you get wet on wet effects. Some areas are not. Um, and all of these will, will help us, I'm sure, when we move on. So that's. Uh, essentially um, the second stage. Right, <clears throat> moving now into this third stage, uh, we've, we've um, done our washes. Um, uh, this stage probably will take the longest time, is where we put on darker colours. Um, it, shadows will go in here. Uh, I, I want to uh, bring in some cooler colors you know to offset things like the warm colors we've got here uh, and, and and this sort of thing um, i'm going to be doing um, quite a bit of painting up here where where all the trees are um, and uh, where i need to i uh, normally what i do is where i need to if say here uh, I, I i want to bring in some trees just poking over the top of the hedge here, um, uh, where, where I've got a variety of soft edges and hard edges of these uh, trees poking up here. Um, I tend to 
I just use water and splash it around and then paint around. Uh, I'm just wondering, whilst we were having that pause, whether if, if any of you would like to see how, how I might use this, uh, where I'm spraying a bit of water on. I, 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 I don't usually do a painting by, paint, by wetting the whole surface, but sometimes I use this to revive, um, if you like, uh, some colors. So I, I think I'll do that. Uh, but, but normally I just use a brush uh, with water. So I'm, I'm keen to get um, some trees coming. I'm trying to make, make this the, 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 the distance here, um, line of trees or yes, and then bring in some trees here. So, so that pushes that back. But I, I want them to be some of them to be soft edges, wet on wet, and I want some of them to be hard. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll show you how I'll use this in a moment. I'm going to do the same here a little bit. And, um, and I might just spray some of this area here um, to, um, to, to add a few other little colors. Um, I don't often use this. I'm, I'm going to do it because I know some people like to use this. So I, I've got my water here. I'm, I'm going to uh, I'm going to take this down to um, I'm going to block off, if you like, the, the top of this hedge here because I want I want that to come a, a sort of crisp white as if there's snow on it. So I don't want to wet that at this stage. So I'll I'll block that off and I'll just squirt this a little bit here and. Similarly, I'll just squirt this area. So there'll be a wetness up here th that I'll paint into. Um, some of them I might need to dry, but let let's just do that. Just a, a little squirts and see how it goes. Okay, let's go there. So when you when you come and check out and see how wet that is, oh, it's fairly dribbling with water at the moment. That um, and I got quite just be aware of how much water is on. Okay, is on my paper. You'll probably see it glistening there um, a little bit. Okay, um, uh, the colours that uh, I'm going to use, um, I, I think I'm going to bring some sort of greens in here. Um, uh, I will use, I think I'm going to use this sap green. Now, if, if you haven't got a sap green, you can mix something like cobalt and um, aurelian together or something like that. But as with this mauve, which I said was a mixture of ultramarine and crimson, it's a useful thing to have because it's what I call a convenience color. It's sort of, you can go to it immediately. As is this sap green, uh, I mean, you make the green from blue and yellow, as you know, uh, but 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 it's quite good, and I often add other colours to it. So, I, I, let's see how it goes with this. I'm going to use this um, this brush, which in fact is a, a new acquisition for me, uh, and um, pick up some of this uh, sap green and uh, add a bit of mauve to it. That's gone a bit too. Okay, and uh, here I'm going to it's quite wet, so I, I'll, I'll come back to that in a moment and uh, um, where where this is going into where it's a bit wet it's uh, it's fine it'll it'll be okay. Uh, Come back to that and, and let's just put a little bit here, maybe. Right. So where, where you've got hard edges is where it's not very wet and uh, where it's um, gone soft, it's, um, it's a lot. Uh, where it is hard edge is not very wet where it's gone soft it's obviously working to it so um here i i'd like to bring in um 
a little bit more warmth. So I'm going to go back to my Windsor Red and Burnt Sienna. And uh, it, it's, it's still a bit wet here, which is good. I'm happy just to add a little bit more. This is this will be darker than the wash, so I'm deliberately, but I don't. I, I want to use some of that lightness that I created with the wash. Let's just um, bring a little bit more of that red down here, and a little bit here maybe. Now this is where, when you're doing your painting, <clears throat> you're, you're going to come up with different things from what I'm I, I'm doing. That that's just fine so do i want to put any more uh, um, any more reds up around here May maybe a little bit really really want to keep that uh, as 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 much as <coughs> i can as a straight line um i think in this uh, uh do i want to bring in yeah i'm going to bring in some greens here there's 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 lots of green some of it's coniferous green ivy and stuff that's growing on the trees but um let's um go back to my sap green add a bit more to that and um I, i'm going to put a, a tree out here which you probably see is this tree, it's got quite a lot of um, ivy growing on it. So let's just put that there for the moment. And then let's bring in some green. This is all very wet at the moment. Bit of green there. Um, stronger, stronger green. So I've been using this green and this purple at the moment. Um, Uh, and it's it's being affected by uh, the the dampness that um, I have here with um, the spray I did. So let's just put a little bit of green. Uh, there's a, a tree here. It's still very wet here. I'll come back to that. It's uh, a little still very wet. Um, I want to create a bit of more softness in this area here. And it's, even with spraying it, it doesn't seem to have done much. So I'm just gonna pick up a bit of water and I've just made that a bit wetter. That's, that's what I normally do rather than spraying things. Um, but, uh, and into that, um, I'm, I'm going to, I, I want to create this feeling of, um, of, the, of things going away here and, and I want some softness. So maybe I'll, I'll, let's just see how it goes. I've got some cerulean here. No, it's, I, I need some red with it. It's gone too blue. It's just, um, I'm trying to create the feeling of distance here. So I'm deliberately wanting there to be some sort of softness here. And in fact, let's, um, let's put in a, at the moment, a few trees. Th these are gonna be really soft and we'll come in with something harder a bit later on. Um, this is still a little bit wet for me here, I think. Um, <clears throat> Let's have a look. I'm going back to this. Um, I, I, I'm going to pick up my sap green and my mauve. It's gone a bit too mauvey. And um, so some of those, when I painted it first time, you've got some sort of softness there and it's probably a bit softer than I wanted it to. So let's just see if we'll see what happens if we bring in. This is using the point of my um, wash brush there. Just a few little marks here. 
Um, all right, let's have a splash of some different color. Uh, let's mix, let's just see what happens. This is just an idea. I've got some cerulean here and I'm going to mix that with um, a little bit of sap green. Let's just see what happens. Cerulean. Yeah, just a, a slight change of greens there. A bit more. Okay. Um, right, I'll come back to that. I want to do something down here now. I want to bring in some coolness. Um, may, maybe, maybe this is a good time to bring in some shadows at this stage. Um, give this a bit more. Okay, so the shadows I'm going to use. Uh, Mike, just to interrupt you one moment, can you just remind everyone what colours the small dark trees are, please? I've, I've used this um, convenience green, sap green here, and I'll mix a little bit of, again, convenience, it's the mauve. Um, and all the, 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 these are much more sap green than, in fact, they're prop. They're, they're a little bit too light for me at the moment, but but some of that might prove useful. So this is sap green with a very small amount of mauve in it, and this is sap green with much more uh, uh, mauve in it, making it darker. Now, now I'm going to bring in some shadows here, uh, and particularly I, I'm going to bring in some cool shadows. So I, I think... Um, I'll go to my cerulean blue for these shadows. Let's just pick that, pick that up here. Um, often when you're watercolor painting, it, it's this sort of play between soft edges and hard edges and, and so forth. And if I'm painting, wet paint onto here. This is all very, hard, will be hard edged here. So what I'm thinking I might do is, I've just got a, a brush, a wet brush here, and I'm, I'm just going to uh, just touch it over some, up the top um, of th this warmth here. Um, and let's just see what that does. So if I bring in, I'm gonna go for, um, Let's let's make this nice and blue, so we've got some good, cool blue shadows. Um, and I'm, I'm using my brush, the point. It's 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 quite a big squirrel brush here, but it goes to such a nice point, and where it touches the little bits where I put some. Um, where I've put some water on, you're gonna get slightly soft edges here. But I'm also conscious that the, the snow falls, not doesn't necessarily blanket things, particularly if it's falling off the edge of a, of a hedge. And so I'm bringing in some of these, this blue here. And as I go away in the distance, I don't want to make too much of it, but. The, the thing, when things go in the distance, they become more horizontal. So my lines are slightly more horizontal there, uh, but they are, as you can see, breaking up here as if there's some sort of snow. So I'm playing the warm colors against the cool. Um, Okay, and, and I can take that, uh, I'll do a little bit here, I think, no reason why I shouldn't use much the same sort of blues here. Again, th there's a lot of shadow cast beneath all these trees here. I'm gonna come to that in just a moment. Um, and, and here we are, and then I'm gonna touch in 
some sort of um, uh, people have been walking a little bit or in the snow. So I'm just making little marks. Some of them next to, some of them over uh, the uh, the warm colours that I put in to start off with. Just a few little marks here. Now this this is going to be quite a bright day. So we we are going to see. Um, certain amount of shadows in, in the snow. And um, so I, I just want that to be the case. Let's just make a bit more of it here. Can you I'll tell us you... again, please, what the blue is? The it's cerulean. Of... It's cerulean blue. I'm just, I've decided to stay with cerulean blue. Let's, let's, um, let's just, uh, if you remember the, this little, I'm going to leave a line of white here just below this um, sort of horizon, if you like, uh, which I think you can see in the photograph. And um, I, I think that works quite well. And that helps to suggest that this area here is the shadow of cast by all the trees. Let's just see what that does. Um, now, they're all a little bit wet, these shadows, so I think maybe I can, um, and they're all a bit even. Um, so let's just bring something here. So I'm, I'm just going to break them up a little bit. I think you've got the idea of what I'm doing with with this. You make up all your own footprints in the snow. Uh, as we can come back and add more if you like. Um, and um, I think that's all a bit too light for me there. So I'll go back to my cerulean and I want to darken that a little bit. So maybe just a little bit of Burnt sienna. Let's have a look. A little bit of burnt sienna, uh, but keep this um, a strong paint. Don't add a lot of water to it, um, because if you do, you're going to end up with these um, uh, blossoms. The Americans call them, and we call them blooms. I think um, that that you often get, well, which can be quite nice, but you may not want them. So I've got. So remember, we haven't gone to the dark. So I haven't actually, I'm going to paint over this a little bit here, but I, I just thought I'd um, bring some. I, I'm touching the, the, this color into here a little bit, so just so that it's not necessarily all uh, just a flat blue, just a little bit here. Okay. I think that's enough for that. Now, um, I'm going to concentrate on doing something about all these trees here. Um, and uh, for this, I'm going to change my brush. This is the sword brush. Um, I, in the last, the last year I was using, oh, keep still. I, this is this my sort this being fairly worn away and I I bought myself another one slightly larger and that goes to that sort of shape it's called a sword and and you get a really good fine line with it as you probably see there um, it holds a lot of water much more so than uh, the rigor rush does this one okay so it'll make a fine line just like the rigger, but it will hold more water. But it will also give you some pretty weird, uncontrollable uh, marks. And, and that's kind of why I like it most of all. Uh, let's see if I can show you what I'm talking about uh, when I'm doing that. So I, I'm going to put in some darker colors now here, um, but not, not necessarily the darkest of them all. And, um, 
the, the colors I'll use, let's just clear a bit of a um, space here. Yeah. And the colors I'll use, I'm going to um, I, I, th I think I'll go back and, and use my sap green. Mike, this is Nancy. On the, Hello, Nancy. Hi. Uh, on the lines from that are going into the uh, kind of tunnel, what colors are these, are those lines that are like the driveway, like the tires of the car? Yeah, they, they were there were these really, which was a bit of, I've used a little bit of Windsor red or okay. cadmium red and a little bit of um, burnt sienna. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. I think that's, yeah, just use those. Um, but, but, but I mean, you know, you could use other colors as, as, as well, but he, here we are. So um, I'm now going to go in and put quite a lot of darks in this. Um, and I, I may or may not need to add anything afterwards. So I'm, I'm going to go in with stronger colors here. So I'll, I'll go to my sap green. And you probably see that I'm mixing a bit of that up. Um, let's just see if I, I wonder, I've gone back to mode there, but um, I wonder if I shouldn't bring a bit of burnt sienna into that. Let's just see, um, make it a bit greener. And here I'm starting to put in my trees. Now, if you want any um, softness to come with that, you you can um, you can put a bit of water on with um, your brush or you could even give it a little squirt you know for instance um, let's just uh, let's just put a bit of softness there the softness there as, as things and, and see see what happens um, we're going to get some interesting marks we've got a a tree sorry what color with the trees uh, I'm, I'm using sap uh, green, Sap green. and, um, uh, and uh, burnt sienna with a little bit of mauve in. I'm just, it's a sort of dark colour here. Um, what have we got? We got, got a whole lot of trees here. Um, I think I'm going to bring in some reds in a moment so and where i've um j just sprayed some water i've got um some softness going on here but but i think on this side i might just pick up a bit of this burnt sienna here something a little more red and let's just um take take just bring in some um, marks. I'm using the, the end of my, the side of my brush, just a little bit. All right create some of the darkness around here maybe maybe go to my burnt umber here it's translucent this color it's, it's it's often quite difficult to get it going but uh and i'm going to add some ultramarine blue to that so just see 
I'm, I'm trying to get a sort of dark shadowy color in here. Let's just, yeah. Let's use the side of the brush to put in some different kinds of marks. Um, and whilst I'm down here, let's let's bring in some some of that colour. So th there's a lot of in in painting like this. You're, you you've got a palette here where you're mixing colours, and quite often you end up not being enormously specific because you you think, oh, that looks good. I'll add a bit more. Uh, I'll add a little bit more blue to that. So that's what I'm going to do. Add a little bit more blue to that. And um, put in these trees as if they've in the distance. Something like that. It, it may be that you come back and do that. There, there's some trees in the distance. You've got the, the, the light behind. I, I, um, I'll put in a little bit more of this red colour up here, I think. Just, just a little bit. I, I, I don't want to block up all the colours that I've got there, but I'm, I'm building up my my tunnel of um, making sure that I have got some darks here. Let's just, and if you don't get it to your satisfaction at this stage, we will be coming back uh, in our, our next stage, the last stage. Um, let's just put in, uh, and now this, this brush is a great brush because I can make these sorts of marks to, to see which, which if I sat down and designed them with any other kind of brush, I'd, I'd, never, I'd never get there. Um, certainly wouldn't get there, there as, as arbitrarily as, as this. And it, it sort of gives a much more natural feel, I, I often think. Um, Right, just bring in um, something of a little bit more green, maybe. I'm just going to bring in something a little bit more green there and, and um, go back to my sap green, um, burnt sienna. I want to make something a bit more red there. So in fact, to this brown that I've got here, which is much, much of it is burnt sienna. I'm just going to add a little bit of this red. That just gives me a little bit more red. Let's just see what happens. Uh, a bit more red down here. Ah, oh, that's better. Got some interesting bits of red here because we're talking about having warm colors against just a little bit there. Um, yeah. Having warm colors against cool. And so that, that's what I'm trying to achieve there. Right, let's go back to my sludgy colors. Uh, I'm aware I'm gonna come in here with darker colors in the final bit, but what else do I need to add? I think I'll, I'll add something there. So um, a little bit of that red maybe. Right, 
right, that, that, that red, that's interesting. We'll see how that pans out as, uh, as the painting develops. That could be quite interesting. So I think I can make this darker um, later on. Let's bring in, now I think I'll, I'll wait till the next stage to, to bring in some darkness here and here. Um, now I'm thinking composition. I want something in the foreground. Uh, and I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll introduce some sort of a big bush or something there, but maybe, maybe I'll do that when I go around the details. Um, and, and something here maybe, so let's something warm here just to set it off. So I, I, I'm, again, I'm going to what's going on in my palette. So I, I'll add a little bit of red to it. Let's, um, let's just put something red there. I might need to put some shadows under that. Something there. Um, Mm. Right. Uh, see, this brush is is really wiggly, so um, it really doesn't do anything. So I'm I've I've made this a, a sort of brown sludgy bit here, and and I think what I'll do is I'll. I'll drop some strong colour in here just to just to make this all a little bit darker. And so if I go, say, to something like ultramarine blue, um, and pop that there, that will start to paint itself, really. Yeah, that will start to paint itself, hopefully, into something a bit darker. All right, let's not fiddle with that anymore. I, I'll come in with some darker trees here. I'm, I've left quite a bit of light coming through um, here just for the moment. Um, I don't know whether I want to do anything more here. Um, let's just leave that and I'm going to deal with that a little later on. So I think this is as far as I want to go with the third stage. Uh, I've brought in darker colours, uh, brought in other colours, being conscious of where I'm using cool and warm colours against each other, being conscious of where I want some colours to be lighter because they're in the distance. So I sort of created that that sort of soft trees. I, if, if, if later on, I'll probably put a couple of stronger dark trees here, which will push those trees further away. Um, I haven't made up my mind yet on the composition. There's going to be something here, only because I feel that will balance the painting a little bit more and help to take us down into the distance. Um, and I quite like this blue. I, I want to try and have that blue really quite blue like that. But as with all things with painting, you, you kind of don't know what it's going to do until you do it. Um, and I would suggest everybody that that's as far as I'm going with this third stage. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of paper hasn't been painted on uh, yet, uh, which is... Um, fine because it's snow and it's also fine because I'm wanting it to be a bright day. Um, if, if this were more of an overcast day as the, it will be in two weeks time then you know I, I wouldn't be going I'd, I might be putting something on this uh, while still using the white of the paper so that's as far as I'm going with this stage so over to you and good luck everybody. All right here we go. Um, this is where I'm going to put in detail and so forth but um, as I mentioned before, looking at my painting, I, I would like that to be a little bit warmer, um, that little area there. It's, um, I, I, 
I suppose it's because I was dropping so much blue in around it. It's become so. What I'm going to do is, um, I'm just going to change my water. One moment. I'm just going to sweep. You know, I've been talking a lot about translucent colours here, haven't I? Well, this, this is where they, one of the ways they come into their own. I'm just going to take a, a, a warmer yellow over that um, and dry it off before, before I move on. Uh, and can you see what I'm doing? Yeah. So do I, yeah, I'll, I'll go for the new gamboge. I don't know if I want it to be quite as... Um, let's just see what that does. So, if I add a bit of water to it, maybe let's just see. And I'm I'm just going to take that with this big moppy brush and and sweep it over here um, and dry it off. It won't take no moment to dry it off, but uh, let's just see. And and I'll try and do it just in one sweep and I'll not keep uh, digging at it. Let's just take uh, some sort of warmth there, a bit more. Okay, that's that's that. That's just added the, the some of the warmth that. Um, okay, let's dry that. Right, well, that has warmed it up. I'm, I'm very happy with that. Uh, at the start of this, I said that painting and snow scenes and things is, is great for the sort of subtlety uh, and the light touch that uh, watercolor is so good at. And, and just seeing that uh, whilst we, we were chatting um, uh, and being able to change it like that, just, just subtly, um, and especially using a translucent paints I've got here. I mean, if that, if that had been cadmium yellow, it wouldn't wouldn't have worked quite so well. It would have worked, but but not quite so well. So that uh, uh, new gamboge I put over there is a translucent colour. And there we go. It's just warmed that little bit up. Okay, now we're doing. Uh, we try and get this little bit done in fifteen minutes, and that, that gives everyone time just to finish off. Uh, this is where we're going to put in detail. Uh, specifically, I want to create a bit more darkness here. Um, I, I want to have that extend that up into this area a little bit here. Uh, and uh, I was going to do something here, wasn't I? Just bring in something along this side. Uh, I'm basically I'm doing as little as I can just to just just to lift the painting and then we talked about this earlier I'll, I'll bring in some some darkness here just to give the impression that the uh, uh, the hedge is has got some sort of bulk and 3d uh, to it uh, coming over um, and maybe one or two little accents in the ruts that have been made either by the car or the uh, the snow or, or, or whatever. Um, and most of what I'm going to do here is going to be dark colours. I don't think I'll be adding any light colours. I and mean, often when we're dealing with buildings and things, we've been doing that during the summer, you're sort of adding uh, Chinese white or uh, acrylic white just to get highlights and things. Well, we're not into that business. And we've been using the, the white of the paper as much as we can to... <clears throat> Uh, give us the, the snow. I, Mike, I don't can want... I interrupt you for one moment? Someone yes. said you've just done the wash, the yellow wash, but it smudged all the colours underneath. Why was that? Well, well, that's because you probably laid it on. I mean, it is such a light touch. Uh, but I mean, don't worry about that. Uh, you, you'll see what I'm going to do in a moment. If you dry it, you might find it'll work to your advantage. 
And if, if you dry it, I'm just going to bring something a bit darker over the top here. And it, it, all that might have achieved is, is helping to send your trees further back. So you'll probably end up with a better painting than I have. Uh, let, let's just see how that goes. I, I'm going to try and work roughly up the top and come down here just to avoid smudge it too much. And I'll probably do most of that with this dastardly sword dagger brush uh, and see where we go with that. Okay, um, a dark color. If I um, ever want to make things really dark, I, I, I add a little bit of neutral tint into it. I don't, I kind of don't want to make it that dark. Um, so I'll try and avoid that. And I'll try and get my dark, my colors by, uh, let, let's see how it goes. I'll get some ultramarine blue. Um, dig that out. Uh, and, um, oh, what shall I add to it? Let's add a little bit of this green. I don't know what that's. I, I'm not really not sure where I'm going with this color. Let's just try out. So that's too green. Ah, oh, I've been put. I've been putting the wrong blue in. That's why. I've been putting cobalt in. Didn't mean to do that. There we go. Oh, that's better. I was wondering why it wasn't going dark. It's been putting the wrong blue in. So we'll go back to a little bit of green. Okay. And um, what's that going to look like? maybe add some burnt sand. So the colors I've used here, cobalt wasn't meant to be in there, but it doesn't matter. The, the colors I've used are ultramarine blue. Uh, I put a little bit of sap green in, but it went a bit too green, so a bit more blue. And then I put in a little bit of burnt uh, sienna there to see what that gives us. So I want to bring in, uh, let's, let's just do this tree. Uh -huh. All right, so I'm working top left and coming down a little bit. Um, I want to keep light coming through the outsides a little bit, gets darker as we go in here. I might even, when, when we do get into the dark, I might even drop something a little bit darker in. So let's say that We wanted, this is an extraordinary brush because it's producing the most remarkable marks that I couldn't even make myself. It's just, this is a dark area. I ran out of paint, ultramarine blue. Sap green, which is my sort of convenience green. But if you didn't have any, you could, you can make a color not dissimilar to that with, with cobalt and um, cadmium or aurelian would give you something close to it. Um, but it's, I, I find it's really convenient to have that um, to hand. And you can see, you can just go in and use it. Of, of course, the, um, it, it's a secondary color I'm talking about here. The, the, the mauve, which I said was a, a convenience color, is a secondary color. The green is a secondary color. And in fact, this color, which I, I've only just started using and I'm not going to use now, I don't really feel that confident with it, is um, Windsor Orange. And um, I, I'll, I'll get to use that a bit more later on, I think, but let's just see. So. Here I'm just putting putting it in. I'm standing back and trying to get an idea. Let's make this bit quite dark here. And someone said that they had smudged this bit here. I'm, I'm just going to 
remember I said that I thought it was quite important to have this little line of white here. Um, I'm trying to keep that. So I'm just going to take these, these darker colors will stand up in front of the lighter ones behind. And so that person who smudged it will probably find that they get away by, do, by just doing that sort of thing. I take some of that across to here. Um, this is still wet here, so um, I, I can add some darkness to it if I want to. Let's make this tree. Oh, I run out of paint. This is normal. Just running out of paint. All right, so that was the ultramarine, the sap green, ultramarine blue, sap green, and burnt sienna there, a little bit more of that. So let's just. Um, let's see, this is where we were talking about. I'm, I'm not putting all the, the um, snow laden branches in here. I, I'm f it's not that sort of painting in a sense. Uh, let's um, put something there. I can make these marks with this sort of brush because um, it is the nature of it. It's great. Let's uh, make that a little bit darker just there. Okay. And Um, one or two little touches. Underneath. I, I think I make that a little bit stronger, that red there. So how did I make that? Uh, let's pick up Windsor Red. Burnt Sienna. Just uh, a mark there. <clears throat> this is um, still I'm going to pick up my, just to see how it goes, this burnt um, neutral tint, which is, we were talking about this earlier, someone said they had Payne's Grey. So um, I don't know if this is a good idea, I'll just drop one or two little bits in here. And so I'm, I'm not using it that much. Just a few little marks. So when I started this painting off, I said that these um, snow scenes are, and this particular one in particular, is quite good for the light touch. And, and hopefully that that's come, out, come about, come across what I'm doing. So I get rid of that neutral tint and go back to this color here. And I, um, Let's have a I'm, I'm touching in this the the sun's coming down here and it's throwing one or two little I don't know is that too much maybe I'll add uh, just one or two little marks In fact, I'll 
pick up something a bit brown and just drop. If you look at um, Monet's paintings of snow and look in his shadows, so often the shadows have made up all sorts of little bits of browns with the blues and things. So uh, that, that will dry uh, a little bit lighter. Let's just hope it does. Okay, go back to this and, and a few little marks here. I'm deliberately leaving this thing here um, uh, uh, till the end, just to show you how we'll do that. So as things go away from you, remember that they become much more vertical and, um, and closer together. And that's all to do with perspective. Let's just... What's the name of the brush again, please? Mike? It's a sword. This particular one I've just bought, three eighths of an inch by Rosemary & Co. Rosemary & Company, Pure Squirrel, Serial Series 39. It's, it's a size up on the one I had before, which is this one, um, which is a smaller size. So I guess this, I, I don't know what, this must be a quarter inch, so this is a bit bigger. But they are annoyingly wonderful brushes. Right. Um, so let's just see if we can make a few little marks here. We're, we're almost um, done with this, apart from this thing I was going to show you here. Uh, may, maybe some of the um, shadow areas can be a little bit darker as we get closer. Let's just. Uh, um, and they get lighter as they go further away. Um, right, let's do something with this. And, and um, <clears throat> I have no idea whether this exists or not, but I just feel compositionally it needs it. So um, I'll go to my my sap green that I've used before many times in this and um, I'm going to bring in some reds and other colors to it and blues just to gray it down a bit and let's have a look. Just something something there and um, I'll pick up some of this neutral tint, mix it with a bit of French ultramarine and drop that down here so that can be painting itself. Just see what that does. Okay, I think with it's half past. Um, let me just stand back and have a look now. Do I want to, I think I'll just add something there by darkness. Let's, um, let's add a bit of, go back to this color. So this was just picking up on that green, sap green with a um, bit of mauve in it. It's gone quite brown at the moment. So let's add some more blue and, um, So this is this is the um, detail, a part of it where you're just going round and um, finishing off and adding details to make it uh, come alive. Uh, 